Hi, welcome to part two. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the galactic hour, which is known as Omega Rising, in the paradigm, we have given you Alpha, Omega, love, fear. Let's call, let's, uh, let's say, Omega rising. Fear rising. Fear is coming to a point of its last leg, so to speak. It's doing its last hurrah. When anything dies, it dies in, uh, let's say, some fashions, vanity. Ones of love die in peace. Ones that are fighting for it because they fear, they put on a show. Fear is dying. The illusion is not, let's say, holding on as much anymore because you're not feeding it. Now, there's a small portion of you <clears throat> in that fashion of the awake community that are feeding love, that are shifting your awareness to what is not illusional. What is all that is? Love. And in that, fear is looking for more food, more energy. So when it does that, it puts out, let's say, feelers in a way. Pardon me. And putting out its feelers, it's trying to find energy. It's looking for food. Fear is trying to sustain itself. So, Omega Rising, the galactic hour, and don't worry how long an hour it is in the galactic years, that idea is giving you a paradigm of where you are at in that fashion to know that you are affecting, let's say, the continuation of the neutrality that Bashar has spoken of is most important at this now. To continue to love all of those who are feeding that idea of fear and give them only love, not one ounce of fear, for that sustains it. Nothing, no thing. If it means for you to turn and walk away, then do so. If your ego is urging you to save them, that sustains them because that means they're being fed. A lot of people don't know that, we'll give you this idea. If someone is looking to, let's say, have a pity party and you have pity on them, it sustains the pity. Pity is fear, period. No one is pitiful, period. You are God's, you are love. Anything other than love is fear, period. No one likes a pity party. And if they're reaching out, save me, save me, woe is me, I need help, no they don't. Because they're God. And they are an ascended master somewhere. Of course here, in the now. But other civilizations, they have what you would call in your time already ascended that species. They're gods. So what do you give the ailment that you perceive? Neutrality? No energy? Love. Walking away is love. Staying, if you have no words, staying and allowing them to be themselves, offering just the vibrational state of love, that helps, because that's giving them love. Letting them play in your Garden of Eden, much of what we have talked about. But if your idea of helping is controlling, telling them, preaching, saving, then you're equal to that of the priest. You're equal to that of the preacher. 
spilling forth his fear, taking you to be less than you are. I have to be so I can be holy in the eyes of God. Really? God looks at himself other than himself. Love. Hmm? No. So offer that unconditional love, that Garden of Eden. And if that Garden of Eden means to stand up, get up, turn away, and walk away, so be it. You have offered more because you have not sustained what they expected. And you will know. All you have to do is listen to your heart. Not your mind. Not the ego. The heart. Listen to that love inside. If action is needed upon that moment, that interaction of unconditional love, you will know exactly what to do. This is what trust is. But if you are formulating an idea on how to fix it, just remember they're not broke. They're fighting it out in their own mind. They're giving themselves opportunities to see what they are and are not. And if you come in and sustain what they are not, then they attach and sustain that paradigm. There's nothing in the paradigm that is not discernible. For you are the paradigm. You know all of it. You know all of it. Everywhere latent in the fold of your mind, in the folds of your mind, is the equivocal knowledge of all that is, period. And the more and more you gain the trust and fall in love with yourself that you are the creator, the more access, accessibility, you have to that latent knowledge of all that is, the God stream of love. Much of it is very fear-based. More of you are finding out. Why? Because it's not coming in the way you expected the ascension to happen. That's why you must hold on to all truths or truth in the moment. Because that truth got you to this person you are now. This person would not be this person without that truth. But this truth cannot be sustained in a series of nows because you miss a higher truth of shifting conscience to a grander you. But it looks so fearful because it's not the way I thought it would be out of the known using the unpredictable to predict your future through security. Oh, the ascension can't be that. Really? All of a sudden, you are spiritualists and you are predicting yourselves into continuation of repetition illusion. Repetitive illusion, rather. You've shifted to a higher illusion, but you're still now perpetuating that because it's so grand and it's so great I don't deserve more. It's so grand, it's so great, I can't see beyond that, so I'm going to stay here because it's awesome. Yes, it is awesome. But you've only got a taste of what you are. So your reality is sprinkling all about you on the outskirts of your framework. New realities to perceive, but they look so distorted, it couldn't be that. But you don't give yourself at this point of awakening. You don't give yourself that is anything out of bounds. Your discernment is so prevalent in the instant moment that you know, in the heart of hearts, not logical, that that's fear and that's love, period. That's how far you are. It's easy. It's a knowing, it is, let's say, built in now. It always was, but now you realize it's built in. But yet you see that fathomable reality that looks nothing, nothing. The way you predicted the ascension would go. 
To not understand a moment is ascension. To not understand, to have nothing to equate it has gone, hey, you have taken yourself rather into the next unknown, discovering yourself, broadening your consciousness. Oh yes, most certainly. It is most epic when you don't understand. And if you trust and surrender and not figure it out through logic and just like take it down and categorize it and keep analyzing it and dissecting the outside, much like your scientists dissect the outside reality instead of the inside reality, you dissect that idea and you put it into a category of fitting or not fitting or maybe using it. That's why we say surrender. To allow. You're in a movie theater. Don't watch the movie and stop it and conduct it. See where this new movie is going to take you. Follow that reality. Trust and allow it to unfold, to get the entire story. And when you get the whole package, the download, that intuition thought block that is calling you, but you don't have the translatable words yet, allow it. Allow it to come in and present itself at a higher conscious level of resolution to the perceived problem. You are shifting. We've talked about the shift so many times. But the perpetuating shifts are happening so fast, so quickly, because you're really choosing your love but don't get caught up in the moment. Don't hop back on the bandwagon of sustaining your God. You need nothing from the outside to sustain anything. Nothing. You will create everything you want, need, in that limiting idea. God promised you this. You always have shelter. You will always have food. Anything beyond that is a want, a desire. So if you know that you're always going to be taken care of, ah, 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 don't say that. The ones that are homeless are choosing to represent. If you don't choose homelessness, you will not have be homeless, period. Ah, no, 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 no. If you think that you need to be meek, need to be spiritually poor to be rich, or, pardon me, materially poor to be spiritually rich, that's another paradigm. You don't need to walk around in a diaper singing Om all day and eating a leaf. That's not spirituality. That is an image to show the world through your vanity that I am spiritual. But without that paradigm, the spirituality wouldn't have been here. That's why all truths are truth in the moment. You're done with that. Don't create out of the past what you think it should be or look like. You got to let go of you ever thinking from the past to create the future, only perpetuating what is. You need no thing. You always have food and you always have, let's say, shelter, period. Out of that, since you know you have your basics, you can create whatever you want. But you have to create through, let's say, okay, we'll say it. Trial and error, but it's not error. It's reflection, expression to understand what else you don't want. Through the trial and error motif to get the idea on how to create. Taking the vibration, the feeling, which is creation, not the thought based on the past, which is laced with fear. The pure thought of perfect now. Not intertwined with any other timeline, any past. Pure on its own. Solid. Boof. That comes. You're looking for it in time. 
It's not happening fast enough, which only gives lack. Time is an ally. Be time. In the moment, and time erases itself. Be in your moment of creating. Creation. Creating. And allow it to come in its natural timing through the co-creation so the entire benefit affects the entire collective. Don't look for that idea, I need it now. No, you don't. If you need anything, you have it. Look around. Right now, are you fed? Are you sheltered? Hmm. You must have electricity because you're watching this. Or you have a phone, you're watching this. Or you have friends that have electricity in a home, you're watching this. Look around and see what you already have. Give things, awesome, and keep creating. Anything. There's no thing out of bounds. It is only your limitation telling you, defining as, if I have this, then I am not this. My idea of what the ascension is going to look like. That's what's preventing a lot of you from accelerating your reality. Because you think it has to be a certain way through the definitions of what spirituality is. What is spirituality? Hmm? A vibrational entity? Spirituality. That's it. And out of that, you get everything. How you create it is up to you. How you perceive it is up to you. You perceive spirituality as a definition of this framework, this scope, then whatever doesn't fit that your higher self is throwing at you all the time, and you say, no, I can't have that. That's not possible. Holy shit. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Because everything is in existence already, and if it can be thought of, it can be experienced. Period. If it's out of bounds, it's out of bounds to your belief systems of creation. Dwell on this. Don't define yourself as anything. Be no thing to experience everything. Create your mansion, your castle, your perfect love, your endless abundance. If you want that, take it. It doesn't matter. Because that's your expression to give back that aspect of humanity for others to look at and them perceive. They perceive. They get the perspective. They understand it. They judge it. They understand themselves through that. Choosing what is right and what is not right as according to them, what is and what is not. Them. That's the gift. But without you following your joy, your love, not what is perceived or it's supposed to be, because that's... Really? Malarkey. <laughs> Roxy. Pardon me. She's laughing. It's not what it is. You know what is and what not it is. And since you know that and you express what that is, and if it's beyond the bounds of what got you here, perfect! Because without the journey of you getting here, how do you know what's next? Without that journey of you getting here, doesn't give you the choice of going beyond what we call this, a wake state. Hmm? If you are in the awake state, are you defining it as such? And if it is within that scope, and you hold on to that because it created a new world of comfort for you, wonderful. But don't get pissed if it doesn't change. Don't get pissed if it's not going right, because that's you sustaining an idea of limitation once again, just shifting your definition. So take what you are now, follow that excitement, and go beyond yourself to see what this species, human, civilization, humanity, in and of itself, is possible of doing. We talked about the quasi-phase.
That's upon you. Ah, teleportation. Candy, but still fun. Hmm? What do you think that would do to the airline industry? Poof, you're there. Hmm. That's the fear coming. Because they, they don't want you to leave. They want you to keep feeding that idea. Because without your energy, it is not your action. It is your thought energy that sustains. Shift, crumble. Ah, I believe in that. I get brighter. I believe in that. I get brighter. You believe in that. That sustains. Fear sustains. They're going to throw every... They're going to throw every idea of fear at you. But now you guys are seeing more and more. It's full of shit. That's crap. That's another story. They've played out so many fear-based stories and new versions of an old scene that you immediately know that hmm, is not real. For that is the illusion for me to choose to sustain or take my energy away and feed my paradigm of eternal love, of all that is, of the new earth, of the humanity becoming more than it ever imagined. Neutrality, Garden of Eden, feed your energy to yourself. Find what you're capable of. Go beyond yourself. We just started channeling. Oh, wait till you see what channeling turns into. Oh, yeah. Much like when the first channeler started, it was, let's say, a phenomenon. It looked at oddly. Now, in the spiritual world, it's commonplace. We have more in store for you. Mmm. Oh, yes. I'll give you an idea. Shape-shifting. All right. Time reader. 22 minutes. Booyah. Perfect once again. <laughs> Don't you love the now? All right. Once again, this is Osipius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. What an awesome impartation we've had today. An in-the-moment interaction with humanity. Much to dwell on, entertain, and allow. Surrender and trust entities of ascension. And watch where humanity takes itself. Through your unconditional love. I bid you a good moment. I don't. <laughs> Booyah! Awesome. All right, guys, I'll get this up today. I love you. Bye.